What I cannot forget about Lino was during the time of the ECP, mm-hmm. ayon yung pumasok sa Manila Film Center, because remember he is so vocally anti-Marcos. Yes. Okay, and most of his films now are, are indictment of a of the Marcos regime, mm-hmm. and it was only when we moved to the CCP and Hami was then the boss that Lino would would grace the occasions of the mm-hmm. CCP. But then right after he matay siya kagad, eh, so mm-hmm. that was the year he died. See, si Ishma is the same, but Ishma had no bones. He he would go to the Manila Film Center. The only film that made Imelda Marcos cry was Manila by Night, and I remember. Nung, nung ginawa to ni Ishma, and this was one of the films that Imelda bankrolled to have, to have a new prints, French and Filipino subtitles. So she called the people behind it, including Marita Manuel and everybody who helped in the writing, sila Manito De Leon, uh, sila George Season, to a big lunch. And there she says, okay, are you trying to kill me while crying? So what are you trying to do to my city of the good the true and the beautiful. Tame ni sila Mother Lily because she was the producer. So what they did is they cut out, if I'm it's not mistaken, mother. about 20 to 30 minutes. So if you watch the film, lahat ng may sex, tinanggal, chop, 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 and all mention of Manila was removed from the film. So it was released during the MMFF, I think. It was shown in CCP, then released publicly as City After Dark. Mm-hmm. But if you watch it in the movie houses, Wala kang maintindihan because in the original Manila by Night, there were a lot of sex scenes between all the great actors and actresses. And what's worse is, Jerry, in the last part of the film, naglag- they had to shoot a, a, a disclaimer. Yung bading na, na character, yes. naging born again, at naging straight, and tapos yung dating bulag, she became a born again. So they had to create a false ending and pasted it to the, to the film. Now, this is the finest ironies. In 1984, we found the original, uncut, integral copy of Manila by Night. Si Mother Lily told us that she had the uncut version. And Amy, being the loka-loka that she was, she said, let's premiere this ed at the Manila Film Center. My hair standing. And so years after the Manila Film Festival, where it was shown as City After Dark, we had a premiere of the integral version it's of Manila big. by Night. But it was a bonga premiere, all the stars were there, but it was uncut and people gave it a standing ovation. I'll be honest with you, the mid-70s and uh, up to the early 80s was a magical era. If you're crazy about cinema, all of a sudden you had the likes of Lino and Bernal making films like Manila by Night, mm-hmm. In Siang, Manila Sukuko na Liwanag, and then of course the films by Peque, mm-hmm. the films by Luis Guillen, the films of uh, Marlu Diaz Abaya, mm-hmm. the films of uh, uh, Mario O'Hara. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing era because before that, we were it was just junk. It was just bomba and I, films. yeah, bomba films and a lot of genre films. I love genre films. I love horror films. I love vampire movies. But then when Lino, ang, 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 sa akin eh, the the thing that that was the hudya or the alarm for the change was Lino Broca's Manila, uh, Manila Sukuko ng mga liwanag. He wrote this and had uh, si Mike De Leon as the cinematographer and Doy as the writer and the team of people who supported him, sila Manito De Leon, were like-minded, intelligent people who just wanted a different type of cinema. Mm-hmm. And for a young kid like me during that era, wow, this was unheard of. It was a big surprise. The biggest difference between Lino and Ishma, for me, in my mind, no? Lino is so passionate. Okay, mm-hmm. He's a people person. He likes, you know, he likes, uh, you know, he's a very emotional person. He likes to, he, he likes to dish it out to you, derecho. While Ishma is the bon vivant. Mm-hmm. He has a fabulous sense of irony and mm-hmm. satire you know he he can laugh at things and can be very sarcastic and if he's hurt he would not show it mm-hmm. lino if he's hurt he would scream at you and i remember his biggest fight with with uh, uh Dutino during the time of burles queen when they were i think basta may may away sila no? nagmumurahan sila dun sa sa ano sa may booth kung saan nagsi-screening and uh, to me even though they were friends and they they had a bit of rivalry, but uh-huh. it was a very creative rivalry. Uh-huh. You would not hear Lino 
bad mouthing Ishmael. You would not hear Ishmael bad mouthing Levi. Uh -huh. They knew who they each were uh -huh. and respected each other. But if you notice their films, yung pelikula ni Ishma, they're hilarious. Uh -huh. They're they're tinged with so much irony. Uh -huh. All the characters are 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 kitsch, etc. Samantalang si Broca, all the characters are earnest. Yeah. And they're actually very kitschy characters. You uh -huh. see, Mona Lisa and then Siam, you know, uh -huh. they're very, you know, a lot of uh, people would like to emulate them in, in soap operas. Yeah. But you would see that the styles are totally different. And to me, that's it. If you're a director, who you are cannot be taken out from your films. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm feeling, kung nga, Jerry, if marami kang skeletons in the closet, don't make movies. Because people will see who you are, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty about these two guys. They were unapologetic.